Hi, it's me, Johnny Boy, I'm back in the garden and uh, we're on a small project here and uh, we're in the corner of the garden and it's a lovely little spot. They've got some um, jasmine against the wall here and an evergreen. This has started to revert, so this isn't happy at the moment. It's lost its variegation and there's some perennial bulbs coming up. But basically, the client here, who's a very nice lady and actually she knew my sister um, many years ago and uh, my sister used to rent a piece of ground off her and um, she said how nice my sister was, how very intelligent she, intelligent she was and how creative she was and uh, that's nice to know and uh, not getting all soppy now, it was great that she knew my sister and uh, wonderful. But look, let's get on with the job and what we're, we're talking about. We're going to repave this area now because um, Sonia's had a, a problem with it and as you can see what the problem is, if you look down, they've laid these old concrete two, uh, 18 inch by 18 inch slabs and they're all up and down, okay? And the reason they're up and down is because they spot laid them. If you look, look, if we just pull that, they're moving around and um, you could see the impressions of the dabs underneath. Never spot lay. Dermashield, absolutely fantastic product. I've been using it for a few weeks now and all you need in the morning is about that much. You rub it in your hands, it moisturises, it repairs your hands, it's got the aloe vera in it, okay? It's food safe, so it's absolutely fine. And it stays on your hands for four to five hours. And I can guarantee you, you see the work we're doing, I'm not wearing any gloves, and I should be wearing gloves, but when you don't have those gloves, these are the products that you can even use it on a baby's bum. This is an absolute fantastic product and I'll be using it in the future. See you soon. Well, customers are never interested whether you know you're working in the wet or not. Some are, some aren't. Like you know, but what we've had to do here this morning, we've got a dry stone wall going around here, so we'll be able to get on into some respect. The weather's intermittent today, but we've put the sheet up at the moment, and there's a couple of holes in it, but it'll allow us to get on. You know, and uh, the fact is, there's some sort of progress. But the fact is, they see you making an effort. They don't like it when you're not making an effort. You need to hold their hand. Hold your client's hand, not literally. This border here, and this border uh, raised bed, uh, it was built on a slab. So we've got a slab down there underneath, and uh, I showed you before where we took all the spot laid slabs up. But this slab underneath here will be ideal to lay the dry stone wall on. So what we're going to do is, I've started to cut back. This is all the root system. If you look at it, it peels off nice and easy. Just use it, you know, all right. These saws, they're not expensive. We use these um, Irwin saws for cutting the wood. But when they come to the end of life, keep them because they're ideal for doing this. If you look at that, how it's peeling off, it's so simple. And it, it saves you knocking it around with a shovel. Welcome back Johnny Boy and uh, we're here again and today we're building a dry stone wall okay we're coming up approximately 450 mil well I'll tell you exactly let's not beat around the bush let's show you what we've got okay we've got 300 mil so I said approximately 400 
by the time we put a coping stone on top it'll be 350 okay the coping stone is going to be of the candela gray okay paving and what we're going to do we're going to cut it off the three by two so we have a long linear coping stone with a cut edge on the back okay so we've laid this dry stone wall we have got some concrete underneath and that will be more than sufficient to take the weight and the load bearings of this wall what we're also doing is though it's a dry stone wall as we're, we're building and coming up we're making sure that we've got a dry sand and cement mix filling it all those gaps but still keeping the joints nice and clean it's great when you're using a quality stone like we've got here this is the Welsh blue pellet stone and there is lots of good stone within this bag because sometimes you go to your stone suppliers and you won't necessarily have the quality stone in those bags so make sure you check those bags that's a really really valid tip that you really need to consider okay obviously when you're building the wall you've got to search through but the most important thing with dry stone walling when you pick up a stone you need to use it because you don't want to be keep bending up and down up and down all the time you know so even if you can't put it here you might be able to put it at that side and sooner or later you'll get in the swing of what to pick up you'll look for that stone and you know the size with this we've got a lot of flat stuff so it's very easy what we could have done if we have had it we would have put more of a thicker stone as a riser and created a bit of a pattern through here if we needed to but we don't have to in this case it's a good contrast again for the patio and it's going to look really really good the client's really happy with it and she's happy because we're here today working in the wet Well, we've had quite a trying morning. Uh, we've had to sheet this area up and uh, because there was a lot of rain coming out. But the, the rain doesn't bother the joint it, okay? You can use joint it in inclement weather conditions, okay? We're using candela gray here and we're using the dark gray from the joint it product. And as you can see, it's looking absolutely perfect match for this candle grey paving. And remember, when you're brushing off joint it, you need to brush out a 45. And what we tend to do, we we'll just go over with a jointed iron just to achieve a better finish. 